Let's get right into hack number one. This is Claude's custom writing styles feature. And it's a complete game changer for anyone who's using AI to help with writing or wants more concise responses. Here's what it does. It trains Claude to write exactly like you. Here's how you can set it up. In Claude, click the tools dropdown near the prompt box and select create custom styles. There's preset versions, which I'll touch on, but first how to create your own custom style. Option one is upload samples of your own writing. Give Claude a few of your emails, blog posts, or YouTube scripts. Analyzes your writing, your tone, your sentence structure, and it develops a writing style based on what you put in. Remember, quality in means quality out, so be mindful of the samples you're putting in. Option two is you can just describe in detail the type of writing you want. You can say, write with excitement or energy, be concise and clear. Whatever you want, you can describe it and it'll create a writing tone based on that. I have a couple of styles myself, one of them being how I script my YouTube videos. Create them once and you can reuse them across all of Claude. To see this in action, I'm gonna prompt Claude with no style enabled and then my writing style enabled. The first is I wanna write a YouTube script and when I have no style enabled, it starts with welcome back to the channel and frankly, I hope that doesn't sound like me. Then I have it write in my personal style and the output looks and feels a lot more like something that I would write. If you don't want to create your own style, there are pre-existing ones that you can just select. One of these that I love is concise. I use this in my normal chats even when I'm not writing so that the output that Claude gives me is concise and to the point instead of these massively long responses where you have to swift through all the BS. The key takeaways with this hack is create your own style and then select that so that Claude can sound like you. The other is that you can easily toggle between different writing styles based on how you want to sound. And the third is that these styles work anywhere in Claude. It's not just a single conversation. Once you set them up once, they're accessible anywhere. Let's get to hack number two, which is Claude projects. Think of projects like giving Claude a persistent memory for specific work streams. This is probably my most used feature in Claude. Let me walk you through a project called YouTube script writing. Inside of that project, I've loaded information about my target audience, information about my life, personal experiences, stories, and specific YouTube advice from people I respect versus generic advice. Now, every time I open that project, Claude already knows all of this context. I don't have to re-explain details every Every single time. Let me show you what this looks like in practice. So this first prompt isn't going to use a project. I ask it to give me three examples where I personally have successfully used AI. And in order to answer this, you would need personal context about me, which it doesn't have. And you can see based on the response, it just can't answer this. Then in my Claude project, I ask it to give me three concrete examples from the reference data it has. And the answer pulls directly from the history that I've fed it before. This is a microcosm of how powerful these projects can be because it's referencing data that you've already curated to make sure that the responses are exactly how you want them. And for anyone looking to be more efficient, I'd recommend creating a project on specific projects you continuously work on. Okay, so the benefit is clear. Let's break down Claude Project's best practices. So when should you create a project? A simple rule, if you'll work on something repeatedly over time, I would make it a project. To set it up, name it clearly so you know what you're referencing in the future. Write an overview explaining what the project is for, and then you need to create custom instructions for the project. This is absolutely critical. But I wouldn't write these yourself. I would use Claude to write them. You can ask, you're an expert at writing Claude system prompts, create a system prompt optimized for whatever your goal is for that project. You would then take that output and put it in the project instructions and refine it over time as you learn what works. Then you'll go in and select resources to bring into the project. You can type it in or copy and paste it from specific resources, but I would advise against that. The reason being, the more you manually bring in information, the more that you have to maintain. To avoid this, I reference Google Docs directly in the project. This way, if I need to change something, I change it directly in the Google Doc file, and then that will populate across the many projects that I have referencing. It. Some key takeaways here is use Claude projects to preload specific context to get tailored responses. Use Claude to create an optimized system prompt to maximize your results and use Google Docs, which allows for you to have a single source of truth across multiple projects. All right, hack number three is Claude skills. Skills provide specific procedures that activate only when needed and work across all of Claude. You wanna use skills when you have a small repeatable task that you want Claude to execute on consistently. And this will work no matter what chat you're in. Claude actually has built-in skills for creating presentations, spreadsheets, even websites, but there's one thing that I find the most interesting, and that's called Skill Creator, which lets you create your own custom skills. Here's an example of me using this skill. So I'll type in, use Skill Creator to create a custom skill that analyzes my emails and tells me which ones I need to respond to immediately versus which ones can wait. Claude will then ask clarifying questions 
options and it'll generate a skill file for me. I can then upload this to Claude by going to settings, capabilities, and then hit upload. And now you can see this anywhere. In newer versions, you'll actually see an upload skill button in the top right of the response. And the big kicker here with Claude skills is that you can actually share these easily across your team. So if somebody solves a problem once, nobody else should solve it. You create a skill, you share it with the team and everyone benefits. Where this gets crazy is that people are starting to create skills and then put them on open source repositories like GitHub. And for those of you who don't know, that essentially allows you to create something and allow anyone on the planet to download it. And so if people are working on skills, it effectively allows you to download a skill into your brain as if it was computer code. This is a whole rabbit hole and I made an entire video covering 19 different Claude skill use cases. It covers everything you need to know about Claude skills, so that's linked in the description, but the key takeaways here are that skills are designed for small tasks that you want to repeat in a consistent manner. Skills can be downloaded and shared easily to anyone, which is empowering an open source collaboration. And you can use Skill Creator to make your own custom skills that are catered to your workflow. Next up, let's go to hack number four, which is about leveling up answers. Here's a problem that we've all faced with AI. Sometimes you get brilliant responses, which is exactly what you need, or sometimes you get generic garbage. The results are just inconsistent. And if you accept the first answer from AI, you are limiting the real value that you can get. So the key to avoid this is by asking AI to level up the response. And there's two ways to do this. First, let me show you the simplest way to do it. So I bring in an article about Claude skills and I ask Claude to analyze it and it gives me a generic response. It says skills are portable onboarding packages that work everywhere to no manual skill selection required. Claude picks them up intelligently. It's kind of just regurgitating what the article states explaining Claude skills. It doesn't give me that deep insight that I want. But by responding, that was a level one response, provide a level two response. This will trigger it to think deeper and provide a more in-depth analysis that isn't immediately obvious when you read the article. And the response is pretty impressive, right? One, skills solve the specialist versus generalist problem at scale. This is facts. Two, this is fundamentally changing the API economics for developers. This is really interesting and this is a second order impact that something like this can have. So that's the simplest way to do it. Just respond, this is a level one response. I want a level two response and you're gonna be blown away with the impact. And now the next way you can do it is you can define certain criteria and ask it to go even deeper. So to help me learn about the industry, I could say level one pain point for artists is they need more listeners. A level two pain point is they don't have first party insight into who these listeners are. You can then say in the chat, give me more level two pain points. And from this, it immediately understands what you don't want and what you do want. And the results are very interesting. The response is great. And one example is they can't identify super fans. And this was a core value proposition of our company. So it was able to land on that, which is pretty cool. But let's go deeper. Naturally, right? If you can go to level two insights, what about level three insights? And this makes me think of the meme with like the brain blasts. You can do that. So you can just say, hey, I want level three insights now. But I would stop there. I find that if you go any deeper, it just starts giving you crazy responses that aren't actually valuable. Here are some key takeaways of this. Simply asking Claude to provide level two analysis will instantly provide better results and give you analysis that isn't immediately obvious. The second is consider defining what you mean by level one or level two to better set expectations. And three is use level three analysis if you wanna go even deeper. Now quickly before we dive into hack number five, the concepts that I'm covering here are all actionable steps for Claude, but there's a lot more to AI than what I cover in this video. And this is why I created a free five day email course, how to use AI to become irreplaceable. Each day breaks down non-obvious traps I see a lot of my viewers fall into and how to avoid them. It's the first link in the description and it's entirely free, but based on feedback from hundreds of people who've came from YouTube and sat in your shoes, I know you'll love it. After going through it, you'll feel energized and motivated about everything that's going on with AI. And if you do not like it, you can just unsubscribe anytime. It's entirely free, no upsells. Go check it out, you'll love it. All right, let's get to the last two hacks, which will transform how you prompt AI. Hack number five is prompt enhancement. We've all been there where you write an initial prompt, you get a response, it's not exactly what you want, so you go back and forth with AI until you get a final answer that you'd like. The thing is, once you get that answer, most people actually stop there, but you wanna go one step farther. Instead, you need to add one final prompt. Reverse engineer our entire conversation and write a single prompt that would produce this final result in one shot. 
Claude will output a comprehensive, optimized prompt that captures everything you are frying across the entire conversation. Take that prompt, open a new chat, paste it in, and you'll see the difference in the initial result. The beauty with this is this can be reused for project instructions that I mentioned in an earlier hack. If this is confusing, don't worry, we're gonna walk through an example. I bring in an article about Claude's skills and I wanted to create an email summary. The initial email that it gives me is too long, so I tell it to be more concise. I then tell it it's supposed to be for a non-technical audience. It tweaks the email and great, it looks good. I now ask it to reverse engineer the prompt. I take that newly optimized prompt and bring it into a new chat. I hit enter and the response I get is pretty great. I will say that in this case, it probably could be more concise, so I could do the process again and land on an even better prompt. My pro tip here is that whenever you land on a prompt that works really well, you need to save it somewhere. And as you get these optimized prompts, I do recommend building out standard operating procedure documents where you walk through exactly how you do tasks and you include the prompts as part of the steps. This process will get you in the mindset of automation so that you can streamline everything you do over time. The key takeaways here is that leverage Claude to create enhanced prompts for you after landing on a high quality final answer. Save these prompts so you can easily access them in the future. And as Claude creates these prompts, review how it creates the prompts so you can improve your prompting skills. Because it's giving you optimized prompts, you can see optimized prompting techniques and get better over time. Let's get to hack number six, which is about ruthless collaboration. I always say that constructive feedback is the most valuable thing on the planet, and this is how you get Claude to give you exactly that. To make this happen, first you ask Claude to review something you've created. You can also have Claude create it if you need. The key when Claude is reviewing it is you would add this to the prompt. Be my ruthless mentor, no sugarcoating. If my idea is weak, let me know and tell me why. Your job is to stress test everything until it's bulletproof. Then after it analyzes what you put in, you can ask it to provide solutions that would mitigate this concern. Let me walk you through three real scenarios because the key is being specific with who is analyzing it. You want AI to replicate the type of person who will be receiving whatever you're creating. Scenario one is reviewing a job application. First, you can bring in your resume and you can say you are a hiring manager for role. You're extremely busy and spend less than 60 seconds to scan a resume. What are your immediate red flags? I brought in my resume in this case, it reviews it and it tells me some valuable things like stale experience. I haven't updated this in like seven years and jack of all trades. I like to think that. So these are valid. So what I can do is say, suggest improvements based on this analysis. And it tells me exactly how I can improve my resume. Scenario two, let's say you're a product manager and you're pitching the head of product at a tech startup. You draft your proposal in Claude and you say, you are now a head of product. Your primary goal is shipping simple things with high upside. Review this proposal and critique it. What features are unnecessary? How can I simplify this while increasing potential impact? And why isn't this idea justified? Claude will poke holes in your concept based on what a real stakeholder would likely care about. Then you can work on addressing them with Claude before you even present it to a real person. By setting the specific details about the stakeholder that you would anticipate asking these questions too, you can fix things before they become an issue. This is essentially like looking into the future. It's extremely powerful if you set it up correctly. Let's go through a third scenario to hammer this all home. Let's say you have a content idea and you want to make sure it aligns with your team's brand guidelines. You can say you are the head of social media and are willing to take risks. Review the idea I provided using our brand guidelines and call out why this idea doesn't work and ways to improve it. You can then bring in a document of your brand guidelines and after Claude identifies weaknesses, follow up with based on the issues you identified help me rewrite the three weakest parts of this proposal close the loop and instantly improve your work i use this technique for my entire youtube strategy i've recreated patty galloway which is a famous youtube consultant and i've told him to be hyper critical and provide constructive feedback to any concept i provide concept that i'm making right here got through his checklist all right that's six claude hacks that you need to start using today and if you enjoyed this, you need to check out this video where I dive into 19 specific Claude skills use cases, which is exactly what I touched on in hack number five. If there's any questions you had, comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.